Vasco da Gama, first Count of Idigueira, was a Portuguese explorer. He was the first European to reach India by sea, linking Europe and Asia for the first time by ocean route, as well as the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans entirely and definitively, and in this way, the West and the Orient. This was accomplished on his first voyage to India. Dargama's discovery was significant and opened the way for an age of global imperialism and for the Portuguese to establish a long-lasting colonial empire in Asia. The route meant that the Portuguese would not need to cross the highly disputed Mediterranean nor the dangerous Arabian Peninsula, and that the whole voyage would be made by sea. The sum of the distances covered in the outward and return voyages made this expedition the longest ocean voyage ever made until then, far longer than a full voyage around the world by way of the equator. One century after the discovery, European powers such as England, the Netherlands and France were finally able to challenge and break Portugal's monopoly and naval supremacy in the Cape route around Africa, the Indian Ocean and in the Far East, opening a new era of European imperialism in the East. After decades of sailors trying to reach the Indies with thousands of lives and dozens of vessels lost in shipwrecks and attacks, Dargama landed in Calicut on 20 May 1498. Reaching the legendary Indian spice route Sun opposed helped the Portuguese Empire and prove its economy that, until Dargama's discovery, was based mainly on trading along northern and coastal West Africa. The spices obtained were mostly pepper and cinnamon at first, but soon included other products, all new to Europe and leading to a commercial monopoly for several decades. Dargama led two of the armadas destined for India, the first and the fourth, which was the largest and made only four years after his return from the first one. For his contributions he was appointed the governor of India in 1524, under the title of Viceroy, and given the newly created county of Idigwera in 1519. Vasco da Gama remains a leading figure in the history of exploration to this day. Numerous homages have been made worldwide to celebrate his explorations and accomplishments. The Portuguese national epic, Os Lucia das, was written in his honor. His first trip to India is widely considered a milestone in world history as it marks the beginning of the first wave of global multiculturalism. Early life Vasco da Gama was born 1460 or 1469 in Sines, on the southwest coast of Portugal, probably in a house near the church of Nossa Senhora das Salas. Signs, one of the few seaports on the Alentejo coast, consisted of little more than a cluster of whitewashed, red-tiled cottages, tenanted chiefly by fisherfolk. Vasco da Gama's father was Estevão da Gama, who had served in the 1460s as a knight of the household of Infante Ferdinand, Duke of Izu, and went on to rise in the ranks of the military order of Santiago. Estevão da Gama was appointed Alcide Moor of Signs in the 1460s, a post he held until 1478 and continued as a receiver of taxes and holder of the order's commanders in the region. Estevão da Gama married Isabel Sodre, a daughter of João Sodre, scion of a well-connected family of English origin. Her father and her brothers, Vicente Sodre and Bras Sodre, had links to the household of Infante Diogo, Duke of Izu and were prominent figures in the military order of Christ. Vasco da Gama was the third of five sons of Estevão da Gama and Isabel Sodre in order of age. Paulo da Gama, João Sodre, Vasco da Gama, Pedro da Gama and Iris da Gama. Vasco also had one known sister, Teresa da Gama. Little is known of da Gama's early life. The Portuguese historian Teixeira de Aragao suggests that he studied at the inland town of Evora, which is where he may have learned mathematics and navigation.
It has even been claimed that he studied under the astrologer and astronomers Abraham Zacuto. Around 1480, Da Gama followed his father and joined the Order of Santiago. The master of Santiago was Prince John, who would ascend to the throne in 1481 as King John II of Portugal. John II doted on the order, and the Da Gama's prospects rose accordingly. In 1492, John II dispatched Da Gama on a mission to the port of Setúbal and to the Algarve to seize French ships in retaliation for peacetime depredations against Portuguese shipping, a task that Da Gama rapidly and effectively performed. Exploration before Da Gama From the earlier part of the 15th century, Portuguese expeditions organized by Prince Henry the Navigator had been crawling down the African coastline, principally in search of West African riches. They had greatly extended Portuguese maritime knowledge, but had little profit to show for the effort. After Henry's death in 1460, the Portuguese crown showed little interest in continuing and, in 1469, sold off the neglected African enterprise to a private Lisbon merchant consortium led by Fernão Gomes. Within a few years, Gomez's captains expanded Portuguese knowledge across the Gulf of Guinea, doing business in gold dust, melgata pepper, ivory and slaves. When Gomez's charter came up for renewal in 1474, Prince John asked his father Afonso V of Portugal to pass the African charter to him. Upon becoming king in 1481, John II of Portugal set out on many long reforms. To break the monarch's dependence on the feudal nobility, John II needed to build up the royal treasury, and saw royal commerce as the key to it. Under John II's watch, the gold and slave trade in West Africa was greatly expanded. He was eager to break into the highly profitable spice trade between Europe and Asia. At the time, this was virtually monopolized by the Republic of Venice, who operated overland routes via Levantine and Egyptian ports. Through the Red Sea across to the spice markets of India, John II set a new objective for his captains to find a sea route to Asia by sailing around the African continent. By the time Vasco da Gama was in his twenties, these plans were coming to fruition. In 1487, John II dispatched two spies, Pero da Covila and Afonso de Paiva, overland via Egypt, to East Africa and India, to scout the details of the spice markets and trade routes. The breakthrough came soon after when John II's captain Bartolomeu Diaz returned from rounding the Cape of Good Hope in 1488. Having explored as far as the Fish River in modern-day South Africa and having verified that the unknown coast stretched away to the northeast, it remained for an explorer to prove the link between the findings of Diaz and those of Dark Ovila and de Piva and to connect these separate segments into a potentially lucrative trade route into the Indian Ocean. First Voyage On 8 July 1497 Vasco da Gama led a fleet of four ships with a crew of 170 men from Lisbon. The distance travelled in the journey around Africa to India and back was greater than around the equator. The navigators included Portugal's most experienced, Pero de Alenc, Pedro Escobar, João de Coimbra, and Afonso Goncalves. It is not known for certain how many people were in each ship's crew but approximately 55 returned, and two ships were lost. Two of the vessels were as NAUs or newly built for the voyage, possibly a caravel and a supply boat. The four ships were the São Gabriel, commanded by Vasco da Gama, a carrack of 178 tons, length 27 meters, width 8.5 meters, draft 2.3 meters, sails of 372 square meters. The São Rafael, whose commander was his brother Paulo da Gama, similar dimensions to the São Gabriel. The Caravel Beriaut, slightly smaller than the former two, commanded by Nicolau Coelho. A storage ship of unknown name, commanded by Gonzalo Nunes, later lost near the Bay of São Brás, along the east coast of Africa. Journey to the Cape The expedition set sail from Lisbon on 8 July 1497. 
It followed the route pioneered by earlier explorers along the coast of Africa via Tenerife and the Cape Verde Islands. After reaching the coast of present-day Sierra Leone, Da Gama took a course south into the open ocean, crossing the equator and seeking the South Atlantic westerlies that Bartolomeu Diaz had discovered in 1487. This course proved successful and on 4 November 1497, the expedition made landfall on the African coast. For over three months the ships had sailed more than 10,000 kilometers of open ocean by far the longest journey out of sight of land made by that time. By 16 December, the fleet had passed the Great Fish River, where Diaz had turned back and sailed into waters previously unknown to Europeans. With Christmas pending, Da Gama and his crew gave the coast they were passing the name Natal, which carried the connotation of birth of Christ in Portuguese. Mozambique Vasco da Gama spent 2 to 29 March 1498 in the vicinity of Mozambique Island. Arab-controlled territory on the East African coast was an integral part of the network of trade in the Indian Ocean. Fearing the local population would be hostile to Christians, da Gama impersonated a Muslim and gained audience with the Sultan of Mozambique. With the paltry trade goods he had to offer, Da Gama was unable to provide a suitable gift to the ruler and soon the local populace became suspicious of Da Gama and his men. Forced by a hostile crowd to flee Mozambique, Da Gama departed the harbour, firing his cannons into the city in retaliation. Mombasa in the vicinity of modern Kenya, the expedition resorted to piracy looting Arab merchant ships that were generally unarmed trading vessels without heavy cannons. The Portuguese became the first known Europeans to visit the port of Mombasa from 7 to 13 April 1498, but were met with hostility and soon departed. Malindi Vasco da Gama continued north. Arriving at the friendlier port of Malindi on 14 April 1498 whose leaders were then in conflict with those of Mombasa, and there the expedition, first noted evidence of Indian traders. Dargama and his crew contracted the services of a pilot whose knowledge of the monsoon winds allowed him to bring the expedition the rest of the way to Calicut, located on the southwest coast of India. Sources differ over the identity of the pilot, calling him variously a Christian, a Muslim, and a Gujarati. One traditional story describes the pilot as the famous Arab navigator Ibn Majid, but other contemporaneous accounts place Majid elsewhere, and he could not have been near the vicinity at the time. Also, none of the Portuguese historians of the time mention Ibn Majid. Vasco da Gama left Malindi for India on 24 April 1498. Calicut, India The fleet arrived in Kapadu near Calicut, India, on 20 May 1498. The king of Calicut, the Samudiri, who was at that time staying in his second capital at Ponani, returned to Calicut on hearing the news of the foreign fleet's arrival. The navigator was received with traditional hospitality, including a grand procession of at least 3,000 armed nares but an interview with the Zamoran failed to produce any concrete results. The presents that Dargama sent to the Zamoran as gifts from Dom Manuel, four cloaks of scarlet cloth, six hats, four branches of corals, twelve almaces, a box with seven brass vessels, a chest of sugar, two barrels of oil and a cask of honey, were trivial and failed to impress. While Zamoran's officials wondered at why there was no gold or silver, the Muslim merchants who considered Dargama their rival suggested that the latter was only an ordinary pirate and not a royal ambassador. Vasco da Gama's request for permission to leave a factor behind him in charge of the merchandise he could not sell was turned down by the king, who insisted that da Gama pay customs duty, preferably in gold, like any other trader, which strained the relation between the two. Annoyed by this, da Gama carried a few nares and sixteen fishermen off with him by force. Nevertheless, Dargama's expedition was successful beyond all reasonable expectation. 
bringing in cargo that was worth 60 times the cost of the expedition. Return Vasco da Gama left Calicut on 29 August 1498. Eager to set sail for home, he ignored the local knowledge of monsoon wind patterns which were still blowing on shore. The fleet initially inched north along the Indian coast, and then anchored in at Angediva Island for a spell. They finally struck out for their Indian Ocean crossing on 3 October 1498, but with the winter monsoon yet to set in, it was a harrowing journey. On the outgoing journey, sailing with the summer monsoon wind, it had taken Dargama's fleet only 23 days to cross the Indian Ocean. Now, on the return trip, sailing against the wind, it took 132 days. Dargama saw land again only on 2 January 1499, passing before the coastal Somali city of Mogadishu, then under the influence of the Ajuran Empire in the Horn of Africa. The fleet did not make a stop, but passing before Mogadishu, the anonymous diarist of the expedition noted that it was a large city with houses of four or five stories high and big palaces in its center and many mosques with cylindrical minarets. Dargama's fleet finally arrived in Malindi on 7 January 1499, in a terrible state, approximately half of the crew had died during the crossing, and many of the rest were afflicted with scurvy. Not having enough crewmen left standing to manage three ships, Dargama ordered the Sao Rafael scuttled off the East African coast and the crew redistributed to the remaining two ships, the Sao Gabriel and the Berrio. Thereafter, the sailing was smoother. By early March, they had arrived in Mossel Bay, and crossed the Cape of Good Hope in the opposite direction on 20 March, reaching the West African coast by 25 April. The diary record of the expedition ends abruptly here. Reconstructing from other sources, it seems they continued to Cape Verde, where Nicolau Coelho's Berrio separated from Vasco da Gama's São Gabriel, and sailed on by itself. The Berrio arrived in Lisbon on 10 July 1499 and Nicolau Coelho personally delivered the news to King Manuel I and the royal court then assembled in Sintra. In the meantime, back in Cape Verde, Dargama's brother, Paolo Dargama had fallen grievously ill. Dargama elected to stay by his side on Santiago Island, and handed the São Gabriel over to his clerk, João de Sá, to take home. Yes, Gabriel and de Sá arrived in Lisbon sometime in late July or early August. Dargama and his sickly brother eventually hitched a ride with a Guinea caravel returning to Portugal, but Paulo Dargama died en route. Dargama got off at the Azores to bury his brother at the monastery of São Francisco in Angra do Heroismo, and lingered there for a little while in mourning. He eventually took passage on an Azorean caravel and finally arrived in Lisbon on 29 August 1499, or early September. Despite his melancholic mood, Dargama was given a hero's welcome, and showered with honours, including a triumphal procession and public festivities. King Manuel wrote two letters in which he described Vasco da Gama's first voyage, in July and August 1499, soon after the return of the ships. Girolamo Cernigi also wrote three letters describing da Gama's first voyage soon after the return of the expedition. The expedition had exacted a large cost, one ship and over half the men had been lost. It had also failed in its principal mission of securing a commercial treaty with Calicut. Nonetheless, the spices brought back on the remaining two ships were sold at an enormous profit to the crown. Vasco da Gama was justly celebrated for opening a direct sea route to Asia. His path would be followed up thereafter by yearly Portuguese India armadas. The spice trade would prove to be a major asset to the Portuguese royal treasury, and other consequences soon followed. For example, Dargama's voyage had made it clear that the east coast of Africa, the Contra Costa, was essential to Portuguese interests. Its ports provided fresh water, provisions, timber, and harbors for repairs. 
and served as a refuge where ships could wait out unfavorable weather. One significant result was the colonization of Mozambique by the Portuguese crown. Rewards In December 1499, Vasco da Gama was rewarded by King Manuel I of Portugal with the town of Sines as a hereditary fief. This turned out to be a rather complicated affair, for signs still belong to the Order of Santiago. On the face of it, it should not have been a problem for George de Lencaster, the master of the Order, to endorse the reward. After all, da Gama was a Santiago knight, one of their own, and a close associate of Lencaster himself. But the fact that signs was awarded by the king's hand provoked Lancaster to refuse out of principle, lest it encourage the king to make other donations of the order's properties. Da Gama would spend the next few years attempting to take hold of signs, an effort which would estrange him from Lancaster and eventually prompt Da Gama to abandon his beloved Order of Santiago, switching over to the rival Order of Christ in 1507. In the meantime, Vasco da Gama made do with a substantial hereditary royal pension of 300,000 race. He was awarded the noble title of Dom in perpetuity for himself, his siblings and their descendants. On 30 January 1502, Dargama was awarded the title of al Nirant dos Mares de Arabia, Persia, India e de Todo o Oriente, an overwrought title reminiscent of the ornate Castilian title borne by Christopher Columbus. Another royal letter, dated October 1501, gave Da Gama the personal right to intervene and exercise a determining role on any future India-bound fleet. Around 1501, Vasco da Gama married Caterina de Ratide, daughter of Alvaro de Ratide, the Alcide Moor of Alvor, and a prominent nobleman connected by kinship with the powerful Almeida family.